God's house and God's house to be a, a place of prayer. And uh, that, that's what we'll focus on this morning in regards to uh, the text, the scripture, the holy writ that God's given us. It'll be about how God wants it to be a people of prayer. And I, I don't see any reason why we can't just begin that way this morning as we gather to start with prayer. And so uh, if you have a specific prayer or something in your heart right now as we've sung and sought to enter into God's presence, then just lift up your voice into the Lord and let's Let's call upon His name. for 
us to call upon you with prayer. You call upon us to lay our burdens on you, that you would carry them. Call them for your love, concern, your kindness, your mercies. Lord, we don't have to just wait to be here in fellowship at church. Lord, you call us to pray all of us. Lord, that's my prayer today, that we, we get grounded in you and grounded in our faith and the commitment and courage to call upon you. They could be called upon you for salvation for our loved ones who may not know you, Lord. Call upon you for your mercies and your grace and healing. Keeping us safe, placing that hedge of protection around us that you offer each and every day. We call upon you when we're driving our cars to the front work as we live to the grocery store. It could be a word, it could be a thought. And Lord, I also want to thank you for the answer prayers. As Jason's already mentioned, Lord, there isn't anyone among us who has not seen something close to a miracle or maybe even a miracle. That's not for us to decide, Lord, but unexpected successes in our lives will be able to work in our families, a, self, a saved life, a saved, a saved mind. Lord, we call upon your name. I ask, Lord, that you encourage us daily to come to you in prayer when we are in need and we want to offer thanks. So Jesus name, I pray. Lord, you call us to pray for those who have various uh, illnesses or medical needs, Lord. And so I, I, I thank you for your grace upon Josie and her hip replacement, Lord. May she continue to heal well and, uh, and be stable on that, that new uh, uh, prosthesis, Father God. And give her great many more years of this activity to serve you. Uh, thank you for Jody House, Lord, and that transformation with uh, the new lungs and how you've been so gracious to her. And, uh, Lord, other, other medical needs that we have that come and go within our body and uh, have your brother here this morning. God, he's had some uh, different medical needs, Lord, and uh, he's heading out on a mission trip to Welch uh, today from here. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, as you continue to give my heart to serve you, uh, Lord, uh, may you match that heart of service up with uh, great physical strength and stability, Father God. Uh, that would be my prayer, that he would be able to go strong and go hard until you say the time has come. And so, Lord, I pray that's many more years to come. And so we pray for just a, a restoration and a, and a, a strengthening uh, and, and a, a grace that will be sufficient always in what you call him to be a part of and using his mind and his physical strength, Lord, to accomplish things for your kingdom. And so may that be so. Uh, this week may it be very productive in Jesus' name. Lord, we are so grateful that we can come into your house and to call upon your name and to uh, know that, uh, that you hear our prayers, that you call us to show our humility and our dependence upon you. And so, Lord, we need you. We call upon you. Lead us as we worship you this day. And we will give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, as we continue singing today, um, if, you know, if you're here regularly with us at Water's Edge, our singing time can be a bit extended. Uh, and so I just want you to know today, especially it's a little bit warmer in here, um, that if, if you need a moment where you need to sit down, or if the Spirit leads you to just sit and contemplate, perfectly fine. Um, we love to hear your voices sing out, but uh, there is the potential that sometimes when we sing it out, we may not be thinking about the words. And you're going to hear some songs this morning that we don't do as often, so it may be one that you're not as familiar with. So soak in the words a bit. Soak in the words a bit um, and, and allow the Spirit to speak to you through that. And one song we introduced a couple weeks ago is called The Lord's Prayer, and it's, it's based uh, obviously off of, off of the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus talked about prayer in Matthew chapter 6, starting verse, verse 5. He says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room. Shut the door and pray to your father who is, is in secret. And your father sees, sorry, your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. They think that they will be heard from 
for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Says, Amen. Just a couple different uh, renditions of this. Um, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. As we sing this morning, I want you to hear um, this truth that God does hear our prayers. Um, he wants us to pray, and also that in these different areas of help need that we're going to sing about this morning. He is our rock and pub. So this song, if you are here a couple weeks ago, you heard it. If not, it's pretty easy to catch on to, but just soak in the words for a moment. And if you have a good sense of rhythm, I can't do that. <laughs> Ebenezer, 
may their body and help I come. He's not saying I'm picking up that means are screwed, right? It comes from this passage in 1 Samuel 7 12. It says that Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shem and called its name Ebenezer. This is at one of those times where God is given the victory, I believe, of the Philistines in this case. He calls the same Ebenezer, for he said, Till now the Lord has helped us. And that doesn't mean that God's not going to be continuing to help them. It's recognizing God's faithfulness in the past and his continued faithfulness into the future. So this idea of Ebenezer is this idea of a rock of help, which gives us one of our reasons that we come to God in prayer, because he is our rock of help. Um, and in different areas of our life, and that's what we're going to sing about as we continue through in, in our need for um, forgiveness and to be drawn to repentance and confession of sin, um, in our needs when we are in suffering or sorrow, and in our just everyday need of coming to Him empty uh, and needing Him to fill us up. And so as we sing these songs, may they be a prayer on our hearts to Him, the rock of help, who has been faithful till now and will ever be faithful. Yesterday, today, and forever.
this morning that you call us to be a people of prayer and asking for forgiveness, Lord, and to be willing to forgive others. And if we do not forgive others, then why would you forgive us, Lord? And so I pray now in the moment, Lord God, that we would uh, apply what we're singing. Oh, Lord God, that you would make us a forgiving people. You would make us a people that uh, do not keep a ledger of uh, others who may wrong us or disappoint us or frustrate us or or, or even harm us or hurt us, Lord, that we be a people that forgives and, and give mercy and grace as we've seen through Jesus poured out to us, His mercy and His grace, despite our not uh, deserving of such love. Lord, help us to be that kind of people uh, that we then, we then are, are just uh, open vessels of Your Spirit to work through us and to be a, a blessing to each other and a blessing to our community in which we serve, a blessing to those places You send us out to, such as Welch here in a few weeks, Lord. Oh, would you give us uh, the empowerment by your Spirit to be that kind of people? Oh, Lord God, would you would you keep us clean from within? Oh, Lord, would you not let the, the things of the world clutter our hearts and our minds, Lord, that then, that then lets the secret sins of, of our heart and our mind, Lord, begin to cloud out and, and, and taint the work of your Spirit within us, Lord. Would you keep us clean and, and, and give us a joy and a hunger of what it means to, to experience the ecstasy of holiness and the joy thereof when your spirit has complete control of us, Lord. Would you allow that to take place? As we as we sing these prayers and praises, would you allow our hearts by your spirit to apply them to us today? For me to apply them to my heart, for others to apply them to their hearts, Lord. That we would come collectively together applying your truths by your spirit in love so that we are a continually transformed people for your good and for your glory. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Without answers, I know sorrow, I have no pain. But there's one thing that I'll cling to. You are faithful, Jesus, your truth.
back over to the States. Uh, he was up in Boston uh, area, I think, somewhere uh, in that region. He got here, and when he got here for six weeks journey across the sea, uh, he became very ill. Had, had a bad temper, uh, 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 temperature, rather, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, control. Uh, he had uh, uh, dysentery. Uh, all the time he would preach, after preaching this, he would vomit blood uh, pretty excessively at times. And so he was oftentimes sick of his life, just pouring himself out the Lord. But he was just kind of just to the point where they thought he was going to die. And he was only in his uh, 20s at that point in time. And so I think it was on the first journey he made the second journey. They said, hey, let's get him away. And so they, they got him away, which I thought was kind of ironic. That he got sent off to, uh, I think it was Bermuda. Uh, one of the islands. I think it was Bermuda. Is that, is that the one that's closest kind of off the eastern seaboard? You can kind of just, just straight out there uh, east? Is that the one I'm thinking of? So I think it was Bermuda. And uh, I'm thinking, like, of all things, if I got that sick and that ill on a ship, I don't want to get on a ship to go catch a break. But they sent him to Bermuda to rest. Uh, often back then, if you recall, just historically, a lot of times they, they would say, hey, if you get the warm weather or certain climates, then maybe your body will recuperate. Just go and rest and, and get a different environment. So, he goes from Bermuda, and what I found intriguing about the four or five page chapter about his life, he gets from Bermuda, he meets a pastor at the, is one of the, uh, I think it became the Presbyterian Church, uh, there on the island, he met the pastor, I think it's called Christ Church, and the pastor let him preach there uh, at Christ Church, and so he preached there uh, that Sunday. He was there for 11 weeks. And remember, he's been definitely ill. He's there to rest, right? And so... For 11 weeks, he needed to tell his story. Well, he preached at that at that church um, for eight consecutive weeks, twice twice on Sundays. And so, okay, there's there's two times on Sundays for eight weeks. He was there for a total of 11. So maybe he took three weeks off somewhere in the midst of that to to rest. But then it told us that he, he was just going all over the island. He was preaching in houses, preaching in the open air when people would gather, preaching in the, uh, that church every Sunday, twice on Sundays. And so I think kind of a... Uh, an analysis conservatively, I said, well, if he, if he just worked eight weeks out of the 11, if you will, and he just preached uh, one day a week, I think it was, I, I forget the math, that's 56 sermons in the time that he was there preaching and proclaiming Christ. Now, all the times when he would preach, he'd preach a couple hours. A and so, uh, that's, just always keep that in mind. <laughs> so he would preach a couple hours, a couple times a day, number of weeks, at least 56, probably many more past that sermons, and he was there to rest. I was taken in by that story from the standpoint that if you do think about George Whitfield, they sent him to Bermuda to take a rest. If you knew the man, what's he going to do when he gets there? He's going to preach. He's going to tell me about Jesus, because that's the, that's the fire in his bones. That's a lion sitting on his chest. And so he goes there and he preaches. And so the Apostle Paul, we're going to get out of Acts. The Apostle Paul, when he was held up in Malta, what did he do? I, I'll find out when I get to heaven. I'm pretty confident he told people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And how, that, how he is our Ebenezer. He is our rock of hope. And even when you think you have nothing left in the tank, that God steps in by his spirit and he fills you to continue to, to fulfill the task which he's called you. The language he's given you. He gives you the empowerment. To do that very thing, you think you have nothing left to give. And then God shows up and says, hey, watch me carry you through one more time, one more week, one more season, one more month, one more year, one more preaching trip. Watch this. And God just pours himself into people until that day is done. Amen. The Apostle Paul, it wasn't, it wasn't done in Malta. He said, hey, I've got something else for you. And Paul knew that. He's going to Rome. And so Paul made Rome to preach the gospel there as well. And so I, I just, I, I just, uh, I'm grateful for how God's Spirit is at work. I enjoyed the book of Acts. I said last Sunday, I'm not sure where we're going next uh, in regards to our time together. When the Lord gets us in the warehouse, I feel in that season, I want to tackle the book of Rome, Romans as one of your pastors. And so I look forward to that uh, monumental task to take on such a, a, a weighty theological, uh, deep, rich book uh, about the gospel of Christ. And so we'll do that then. Until then, I'm not sure. We may just kind of float around from Sunday to Sunday, trust the Spirit of God. He'll show us what He wants to show us. And uh, I thought about Jeremiah, uh, but I, I, I'm not sure I can handle Jeremiah this season. And so we'll see what God does. But this morning we're in Acts. I mean, this morning we're in James. I keep like Acts again. I'm not going to do it. We're in James. And, and in James chapter 5, this is the 
text that I, I've preached over the years. It was a text that became very important to me, very uh, foundational, uh, early years of ministry, and I realized how, how critical it is. Uh, but yet, even learning that some 25 plus years ago, how critical what God gives us here in James, I also understand that, that I need to go back and I need to be reminded that how critical this is because, because I still fall short. I think if I was, if I was, uh, if God was, hey, he transferred your church family, I fell short of this this week. It's like, it's like my tank was empty. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even didn't know how or wasn't able or, or didn't or just kind of know even to, to do what's in the text here. And so, and so I didn't go back to it and be reminded sometimes about what God calls us to. And that's to be a people of what we just did this morning, a people of, guess what, a people of prayer. God wants us to call upon Him. God wants us to, to show our dependence upon Him. God wants us in humility to say, hey, God, I, I need you. As I think Christian said in prayer, whether, whether we're physically on our knees or our face before the Lord in a physical posture, but in our hearts and our minds, God says, hey, people, show your dependence on me. You call upon me because if you do it in your own strength, it's all for naught. If you want to be about the kingdom of God, the glory of God, then we the people pray unto the greatness of God. We pray, pray for the kingdom of God to come, the kingdom of God to be advanced, and the church to, to flow, and the spirit to move through us. We need to be a people of prayer. Otherwise, it's all in the flesh, and we do not want to be a people of the flesh of a carnal spirit. We want to be the spirit of God. So how do, you, how do we do that? We pray, God help us. God, you come forth. You, you do your work. You work through us. And you, you empower us. And you, you fill our needs. And you give us an understanding of being what sensitive to be. What to be sensitive to? What not to be sensitive to? What to, what to allow to come in and what to allow to keep out? You, you, you enable us in prayer and to have a, a God's supervision in all that we do. That's, that would be the heartbeat. That would be the heartbeat. And so I, I learned this passage uh, years ago. For me, it was, I remember it was actually kind of a... Like two crisis points come to mind in regards to this passage of, of, on prayer. One was, uh, I was at seminary, and uh, it was late at night, and, and I was preaching maybe the next day in a sermon delivery class, maybe the day after that, I can't remember exactly, but, but I had some lanes open, all this theological stuff coming at me, like my, I had a head. I mean, literally my head hurt. It was like, it was like uh, I had a professor talk about it one time, he said, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll wrestle so hard with the text, theologically, like, what does God mean? by all that, right? Like sovereignty and free will. Like, how does all that work, right? In our humanity. And so, I'm out in the hallway. He said, sometimes if you get up in the hallway, you probably get a headache. Just kind of get in the way. And, and I thought, that's me. I'm out in the hallway, sitting in the hallway. Late night, your bell's in the bed, and I'm, I got a headache. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. What we're going to preach. Like, sometimes it's overwhelming to me, even to study your word in this way. And so, I remember calling my wife and called Jody and I said, honey, this, this assignment coming up two days from now or next day or whatever. And I'm not exactly sure. I just... I want to have clarity. I want to honor the, the assignment of the class and so forth, do well and all that. And so, uh, but I, I don't know what text to preach. I don't, I don't have a clarity. I, my mind probably gets too too wide and where I, I have a hard time kind of circling in and getting something really tight. And see, so I have to, I have to be reading James, and, uh, James chapter 5, this, this, this passage. He said, What about prayer? Why don't you preach on prayer? So she kind of kind of come out of the passage. And I said, Well, sounds very clear and simple. It's like, it's like kind of like one, two, three, four. You know, like I can do that. And so it just it kind of just registered my script in my heart. And so I remember studying this passage. I preached this passage in seminary years ago. And, and God has blessed me with it over the years. I preached it different times, different places. Uh, even throughout Virginia, when I was uh, going to that class and get a chance to preach other places throughout the, uh, Virginia, I all times preached this prayer. And, uh, and God was just good to me. He, he was just good to me through a passage of prayer. But I was kind of in a hard place. And I knew my wife was praying for me, and prayer was a subject matter, and God let me figure out how to communicate His word. And I was so grateful back then. I remember that sermon early, early on, the other crisis in that midst was, uh, I think I started seminary, and I was asked to preach revival services. Uh, you know, that means in our cultural context in America, typically this means extended meetings. Uh, you understand, we've been looking at the past four, five, six months. Uh, we don't control revival. Uh, if I did... But I know, but if I did, somehow the Lord of God, I would try to do that, but I don't control any of that. So we have these extended meetings. Preach the gospel three or four times uh, in one week, or maybe it's week long. So I'm asked to preach in these revival services. And I, okay, and so it's like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I have a full load of seminaries so down to Raleigh, Carolina, uh, that region. Uh, you know, every week, and coming back home, just a lot, a lot going on. And so, okay, sure. And so, like that, like that sermon for the class, you know, I've got a message finally for Friday night. And I've got a message for Saturday night, and I figure, well, God will help me get through Sunday. And, and Sunday, I'm thinking, like, Lord, I don't have anything. I, I'm like, I'm tapped out. You know, I'm, I'm I, you know, it's like, you think there's not a message somewhere here? I mean, three of them, possibly? I know there's not three in there. I don't have a, I don't have a third. What am I going to do, right? And so.
so, so I, uh, I just wrestled with it. And uh, my wife, I thought I'd go to bed. I remember it was like 2 or 3 in the morning. I turned the store before probably. But I had I had my desk there in Richmond. Uh, I had uh, all, all, all the commentaries. for borrowed books from my dad. I had all these books stacked up around my office. I got a cup of coffee. I knew I had a mountain to do. But I was just going to stay up all night, Lord. I, 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 if anything you give me is a work ethic, so I'll just hold on to that. that. That's one thing you probably can give me. So I'll hold on to that. So I'll stay up all night. But nothing's coming to me. And I don't know what I'm going to preach on. And so, and so 1, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., my like, God, like this. You know, it, it'll be 6, 7 o'clock in the morning pretty soon, so what would what, what give? What do you have? Right? I think I took a, a break from my office, and once again, I thought my wife was in bed, and we had a long hallway down to the, our, our master bedroom area in the house, and I, I looked down that hallway, well, the restroom, I saw a light on back in the room. You couldn't see the full room through went down the hallway, so I thought, that's interesting. She went to bed a couple hours ago, and, and I walked down the hallway, and I turned the corner in the full of the room, and, and there's my wife, Jody, uh, on her knees, praying, Interceding on my behalf. You think I've ever forgotten that story? Nope. And, and I realized then, like, that's that's what that's the power of prayer. Like, I, I felt a little bit of peace saying, Well, if my wife is praying for me, she's interceding on me on my behalf, then, then, then it's gonna be okay. He's got to cause to pray, he calls to be dependent upon him, and, and humility call upon his name. And so I've never forgotten that, that storyline in regards to this, this text of scripture that, that, that God works us through and, and just kind of, you know, to jump into that story, God did provide. And I wasn't able to preach on that Sunday morning. I think prayer had a, a critical part of it. And so what we've done this morning, lightly if you will, we, we hit on a couple of prayers. We prayed about, hey, let's be a forgiving people. Let us, let us, um, not, not, he, God knows the secret uh, areas of our mind and our hearts. And so in our mind and our hearts, let us be, let us be, uh, 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 just uh, confess it to the Lord. Let us be uh, repentant to, to the Lord. And, and we pray for a, a brother or two, a sister uh, that has uh, some physical illnesses. And we pray that way. And so we pray in various ways. And I'm going to ask the question, so why do we do that? Why do we pray? Well, why do we call upon God's name? Sometimes you probably pray, like, I don't, I don't see God doing anything. I, I, don't, I don't see any handwriting on the wall. I, I, don't, I don't see something in place. I don't see something physical going on. I don't see any, like, action in the moment. So why do we do it? Uh, well, we don't control what God does in the prayers. Uh, he is sovereign over our prayers, and, and so we just do it unto Him and trust He is going to be the good Father that He is. He's going to do something to His glory. Uh, but we pray because God calls us to pray. And we pray, as I mentioned, a number of different ways just then, uh, in different circumstances. It's not just praying when, when I've sinned. It's not just praying when I'm sick. It's not just praying uh, when I'm in kind of some kind of suffering. Uh, it's praying... All the time. Paul would say to the church, what? To pray without ceasing. So let me just argue that out in James uh, 5 here briefly this morning. And see what God has. I want, I want us to see where it comes from. So verse 13, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him do what? Pray. Maybe. A, yep, there it is. Let him pray. So suffering obviously can come different forms. Uh, you know, some may think this may be physical illness. It's hard to know exactly what Paul meant here, but he uses different categories. I think suffering can be in a variety of ways. Obviously, obviously suffering for the, the cause of Christ. The Apostle Paul experienced that. Uh, and I think he had a few uh, aches, aches and pains throughout his ministry based on the persecution he received. And so he understood suffering. He understood being run out of town. He understood being uh, stoned to death. And so suffering comes in various forms, obviously. But if there's any kind of suffering that's taking place, what God calls His people to do is to do what? To pray. Pretty simple, right? You see my last song is at seminary. Well, okay, God makes something just very clear. You know, just to say, if you're suffering, pray. Anybody here suffering in some way? Anybody have some hardships on, on the workplace? Uh, maybe be ostracized by some family members? Uh, we, we pray for family members today. We want our family, what? To come to Jesus. How, how can we want anything less than that? To come to Christ. But how can we want anything less? And so sometimes you may, if I put it this way, you might suffer in your spirit. Like, oh God, would you please save our family? And, and so you, you may be kind of suffering that way. You feel some tension and some ostracization. Uh, ostracization, I mean, can't work correct in a moment. But you understand what I mean. And you feel that. And so what are the suffering is? What are we to do? Pretty simple. Let's just pray. Just pray. Hey, how about this? Does anyone want to be cheerful and do what? Sing praises, right? Just ask you. I can argue out a little bit later in the 
Test, let me just ask you, if you, if you have a heart full of joy, and, and you're seeing under the Lord like we are doing this morning, we even pray, Martin prayed for us to have that kind of joy in our spirit when we, when we sing, let us feel that, Lord, and, and I can help you this morning. You know, I, my, my heart's kind of empty, my mind's kind of empty, but yet just singing praises, it'll kind of, it'll kind of fill full of joy. Like, hey, God, you're in control, and you are Ebenezer, you are our rock of hope. Did anybody else need to hear this morning? Did anybody else need to hear the words and the truth that Ebenezer, that God is your rock of hope? Amen. Anybody need this morning? Yes. yes. You think if we, if we latch on that, that just possibly by the Spirit of God, sometime during the week, that He might take that one concept, God, you are our rock of hope, and somehow remind us of that during the week and say, ha ha. That, that seems a little bit challenging, but guess what? I've got a God who is a rock. He's a rock of hope, and in other words, he is strong and mighty, and, and I'm in a good place because I'm his son and I'm his daughter. What do you think? Amen. Draw from it. Draw we gather. We gather and fill ourselves up, and then when we're out in a week, we, what, we draw from the things of God, the truths of God. And so when we sing, we make a, a joyful noise to sing unto him. We have that joy that God puts within us. I don't think he wants us to hold on to it. Man, I am just, I'm just overflowing about what God has done to me this week. I say it's in your spirit. And you just say, you know what? I'm just going to keep that to myself. I'm not going to tell anybody. I can just explode right now with joy. But I'm just going to hold on to it. I, I'm just not going to let anybody know. No. You, you sing it out. You, you sing praises to God. And, 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 and as, you, as you let out those praises, and I think it's an act of prayer, based on the context of all what James is going to give us here. And so it's an act of prayer. So you, you let it go. And as you let it go, maybe it's just between you and the Lord, like in a secret place. But maybe, maybe the joy of your spirit as you sing and you and, and you and you let things go up to the Lord in praise and rejoice, it might just have some influence on those around you. Is that possible? It might just influence somebody, somebody around you when you when you sing and when you are full of joy. <coughs> Well, we can stop there, but I won't. We'll move, we'll move ahead. We won't do two hours a day because of the heat. But I tell you what, <laughs> let me just plant a seed. I, I hope the Lord. It may not be this morning. I'm going to be this morning. I, I love it when the Lord puts us in, in, in different, peculiar circumstances that challenges our comfort in order to get a hold of our hearts and minds to the glory of God. Now, that would be my prayer. That's what, that's what I even love about missions. Well, I didn't go to missions because of this, 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 and this. I know. Guess what? That means we'll be out of your comfort level, and that may be exactly where God wants you. Maybe may be exactly where God wants you. Why? Because you have to trust in Him. He's got to figure out how this, 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 and this happens, and it works itself through. And so, so yeah, so a little bit heated today, um, but that's not a bad thing. But we're not going to belabor for a couple hours. Um, but, man, God... Get us out of our comfort zone. How do we want to do that? Hey, here's number 14. Is anyone among you sick? So we've seen, is anyone among you suffering? Is anyone among you cheerful? I think both of us come to pray. Is anyone among you sick? What do you do? Call the elders of the church and let them do what? Pray. So obviously we can unpack this in greater detail. I'm only in with oil in the name of the Lord. I'll just say that's setting them apart. I don't think, I don't think if you're, if one of you all eats sick, I don't think right now, as two of us elders, we're looking to expand uh, that responsibility here in our church. But if me and Mike, uh, if you were sick, I don't think you want us to come and rub oil on you. Would you agree with me on that? I, 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 don't mean, I don't mean what this could mean. But as far as medicinal purposes, I'm not going to come and, and do that. It, 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 I, I don't have any magical formula, uh, miraculous formula that, that somehow I, 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 I would put oil or medicine on someone. That's not what I'm speaking about. Sometimes the Roman Catholic Church stuff is like sacramental rites or the last rites or whatever on somebody. I think what this means based on Old Testament context is simply, yes, you can you use oil if you want to, but it's simply setting someone apart for a time of specific prayer. You do want them to be focused on, and so if you want to anoint their forehead with oil or something to show that, hey, this is a kind of like an Old Testament picture of anointing a king, if you will, setting them apart for something special, we're going to set you apart for prayer because we want God to work in a, in a wonderful way, in a mighty way, we're going to trust in Him. But we're going to do that. And so the point, though, is simply do what? When you find yourself sick, do what? To pray. Hey, here's something that's kind of important on this text. 
It doesn't say that the elders will always know that you're sick. It doesn't say that it may always be the elders as well. They're supposed to uh, equip the saints for the work of the ministry. But here's also the responsibility. When you are sick and you need prayer, then your responsibility as the body of Christ is to do what? To call the elders of the church. You see how it's both ways? Uh, and, and we might have that, that struggle inside the water's head. Let's just be clear of Scripture so it doesn't come in the future. Sometimes the years pass and I might say, hey, you didn't go see so-and-so. I said, well, I didn't know so-and-so was sick. I had no idea. Well, we thought you should have. We assumed you should have. Like, well, I did not know that. And so... Had that person called me and I could come and pray? Do you think I'd go pray? Just like any of y'all would go pray if you do something? So we have to let each other know. And here's a clear text that says, hey, church family, we all work together, let each other know in various ways. And if you're thinking or assuming someone specific doesn't know knows it that you really want to hear from them, then just call them. <laughs> call them and ask for prayer. Does that make sense? I will make sure we're all, you know. All right, so it's kind of simple. That's all about James. James is kind of very simple. It's a great book to go to occasionally. It's like, man, it's a clear thing. So, let me see we're praying times of suffering. We're praying times of joy. Get that back to the Lord in prayer. Pray in times of sickness. I think we we'll probably put one more out of here. And then and then also it says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Why, if you can't out there, I might say something about it. But it says, and if he has been sins will be forgiven. Let me just pause a second there. So, we're to pray, pray, pray with a faith. Pray for belief that God's going to work, and, and God will save the one who's sick. He'll save him, I believe, and the Lord will raise him up according to God's plan as to how that looks and what that means. I believe God can save someone by raising them up, by taking them what? Right in the presence of himself. I, I've said this over the weeks. We are all going to die someday. So if your highest priority in the, in the church is for healing, for example, physical miracles, what point does that end in the gospel become higher than that? The gospel is ultimate, and we're all going to die. And so we pray with faith, but we trust God that He will lift them up according to His plan. And His plan sometimes is to lift people right into the presence of God. His plan sometimes is allow what we might call sickness and suffering, what? For the glory of God. <coughs> One of the favorite texts that stuck in my mind as a, as a young minister was when the disciples were with Jesus, and they're coming into the temple, and they see the blind man. And you recall what they say? Hey, who is sin? Is it, the, is it him or is it his parents, like his family? Because in their context, they would believe, well, somebody's got to be sinning. Because look, look, he's been blind since birth. And so somebody's done wrong. The sin is definitely, the, 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 the sickness or the, 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 the blindness uh, is definitely tied to sin. It must be. And Jesus says, what? Neither, but for the glory of God to be displayed. I saw, I saw something this week. <laughs> I think it was pushback against certain views of theology. And it was pushing against the sovereignty of God. And I think it said something about the sovereignty of God was not really spoken of until till, uh, Augustine. You know, and, and like, you know, like, I think it was spoken by, I think it was spoken by the, the ones who wrote the scriptures because this is an example in itself. Jesus, Jesus knew what the blind was there for. He had a sovereign plan all along. And it was for the Lord God to display the moment as he gave sight to that blind man. And so God is sovereign over all things. It's a wonderful doctrine to hold on to. And when you don't have the answers, when I don't have the answers, you know who has all the answers? God. Because he reigns. And it's just a wonderful doctrine. And so, and so I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked there. I gotta I gotta pull back. I was talking about prayer of faith. So we want to have faith, yes. I think we need to trust the Lord in, in what he's gonna do. And then he does hear, though, in this text right here, James does, and if he has committed sins, to be forgiven. I can't get out here long, but I think if one is sick in some way, if there's also a sin attached to it, that if their hearts are humble and calling out upon the Lord, and that forgiveness comes in that picture as well, uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem personally. If I'm really sick and there's something like traumatic physically happening, and, and I say, well, I don't know if I've really been confessing. I confess to the Lord as a player. I don't know about, you know, Lord, is there, any, is there any sin in my own spirit that needs to be tied to this? Could this be a conflict to allow me to get my, get my attention? I may not be, I may not help your theology, but I'm just saying, I don't mind asking the Lord. And so, I don't mind just confessing, hey, if there's anything I'm not seeing in my spirit, I confess it, Lord. You keep me clean, you keep me whole, whatever. And so, and so I, don't, I don't mind. You know probably why I'm standing before you this morning in regards to physically sitting here, standing here preaching and teaching? It could have been other things, not being able to work out other ways. It's because God took my function to run and be physically active out more equally. When he, when he had my hips go and I needed 
the double hip replacement in my late 20s. Uh, that was a, a physical dynamic that just kind of rocked my world. But through that, God says, hey, it's not about, it's not about the hips. But you quit running and you run with me. And so God can use physical things, physical things, to, to speak into our lives, to glorify His name, to get our attention. And I think sometimes, it, I can, I won't, I won't put it on you, you just wrestle with it. I'm saying for me, I can maybe be sin, sinning and maybe God left some kind of element to say, get my attention, and He works through that. Possibly. But I'm not saying theologically, it's like the blind man, that every time someone's sick, they mean there's, there's a sin attack to that. Absolutely not. That's not what theology of water says. It's simply not the case. But I'm saying in all circumstances, what should we do? I say, call upon God. I say, stay repentant before the Lord. Is that, is, that, is that an always thing? Sure, why not? Let's just all stay clean and repent before God so that we don't have to even worry about it. Like, I'm, I'm, what have you got in this? Your grace will be what? Sufficient, church. So, when the Lord forgives, um, you know, if you were to read back in James a little bit, I, I love the phrase there. It's, it's in a simple way, but it's such a, I think it's profoundly to be applied to anything across the scriptures. What James is practical. I won't go into the whole story, but James says, if the Lord wills it, you will do such and such. If the Lord wills it. God says it's going to happen if He wants to take place in a will. But you be careful in the arrogance if you're boasting. Like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen right now. You know, it's American way. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to man my word. I'm, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to put this deadline. I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm going to, like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's nothing wrong with saying goals. Nothing wrong with being ambitious. There's nothing wrong with, like, moving forward on things. But as a believer in Christ, you should submit your spirit under the worship of Christ and say, you know what? If the Lord wills. I'm going to go and do this and this or that. And I'm going to leave it to Him. Same thing with sickness. If the Lord wills, may it be so. Praying for Christians. Uh, if Christians watching today, Christian, we pray for your healing. We, we want God to step in. And I, I would pray miraculously, please slay. That's my prayer of Mazar. Amen. And so if, if I pray that way, if you pray that way, thinking, well, I don't think God can actually do that, then that's not a prayer of faith. A prayer of faith says, have you met my God? You know, you know my God who he is? What he can do? He can do that like that. He can do whatever he wants to do in a flash, in a moment. And so I'm going to pray to my great God to bring that kind of healing upon her. But most importantly, I'm going to pray, Lord, your will be done. You know exactly how you're going to play that out in the life of Kristen, the life of her kids, the life of Chris. You know how you want to bring glory to your name. And her heart, as I believe it is, as we saw Chris preach a couple weeks ago, say, sister, to God, you use this? Even when we don't understand, you use this for your glory? And oh, my goodness. You're going to be done, Lord. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I think in a moment, for you, Ryan, I, I, I remember seeing uh, both Ryan's parents, you know, you know, definitely on the hospital. You're like, why? Why, why at a younger age? You know, they got a lot, many years left to serve. I'm like, and, you know, they're both going to be gone. You, you said, like, and like, why? Well, it's for the Lord's glory. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I know God's faithful. I know God's good. And their testimony to hold on to God in the midst of the sickness, under the death, is a good thing. It's what Paul taught. It's what the Spirit of God gives us. And so no matter what, we can be used for the glory of God, no matter what circumstances come our way, whether it's, whether it's suffering, whether it's sickness, or even joy. Let's take it all back to the Lord and give Him Praise or prayer we sort of depend upon him. Sin is the last one that's on the text here. I think it's the next verse. <clears throat> Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray. Pray to one another that you may be healed. So I saw four circumstances. Suffering, sickness, time of joy, time of sin. We need the people be a people of prayer. Sometimes it's one another. If you if you can if you if you sin in such a way that affects multiple people, affects the church, that's when the church, this never happens. Just so you know, I don't sense it happens very often. I don't think it's a bad thing. You you sin in such a way that affects the body of Christ. I believe your walk may be challenged because God said, you know what, you really want to be filled in your spirit and let go of that secret place. Come and confess to the church family that loves you. Get right with 
Jesus, let God work that testimony of humility to then infuse the church with, with cleanness and joy and, and, and just the work of God's Spirit that does things among us. Oh, my gosh. Someday, I pray someday, maybe we might get there. That's one of the things we see in the revival. When God's Spirit is poured out in a unique way, then people sometimes really just need to live out the Scriptures. And it's a little peculiar because it's off the charts a little bit, but not really. It's just, it's just biblical truth. We confess our sins to one another, and God brings a healing into the church family through that. Oh, oh, we might see that in our day. If I might see that in my day, before Jesus takes me home, that would be a beautiful thing. If I might not live that out before you in our day, that might be a beautiful thing. So pray, though. I, I miss it four circumstances. <clears throat> and I miss what we can go two hours today. But let me ask you, do you think prayer is just for uh, four circumstances of life? Or do you think Paul's saying, yeah, just that's a few examples. <laughs> but hey, let's just, let's just pray all the time. Let's just be a people of prayer. Let's pray without ceasing. Let it be when you're at work, you're on hands and knees, when you're supposed to be swinging a hammer, or working the financial books, you're on your knees praying. No, no. You can just, you can multitask as a believer. You can swing the hammer, you can work the financial books, say, hey, Lord, help me. It's kind of a difficult task right here. I'm trying to do this. And just, you can be praying in your spirit and your mind. Just saying shrimp to the Lord all the time. That's possible for believers in Christ. I truly believe it is. So, so we pray. So it's not to see circumstances, but then I want to raise one final question. Yeah, wait a minute. Does it really work? Like, what's the use? Why, why should I pray? It, it, well, a couple different things we can say. But one, obviously, is because God says to pray. And then he gives this incredible passage, the prayer of a righteous person, some of the previous ones. The prayer of a righteous person accomplishes much. ESV says it's, uh, it's powerful while it's working. Uh, verse 15, I think it is, uh, Caden. The prayer of a righteous person, it, it has this great power while it's working. Uh, New King James Version, that I memorized years ago, you know, the passionate prayer of a righteous person accomplishes much. You want to accomplish a lot? You, you want to see the power of God at work and be a, be a person of prayer and trust that God's hearing your prayers and you say, Clean before him and doing things that are, are, are according to his will and it's a good thing and he's a good father. I think you trust him, but man, believe that things are happening through prayer. The prayer of a righteous person accomplishes much. Great power is working. And then it gives you an example of Elijah. Elijah is a great prophet, right? Of the Old Testament. And it says Elijah prayed. He did, did not want to rain, wanted judgment to come, condition to come, and it didn't rain for like three and a half years, right? And then he prayed again, and it rained. Pretty, pretty amazing. You guys ever done that before? <laughs> <laughs> if you have that ability, you may have to pray for rain, but it's kind of dry your labor. Yes. Probably the farmers. But I, I remember, I remember, I've never really had to pray for rain like that before, but, uh, but that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. Oh, I it's not bad, it's not bad. You know, three and a half years didn't rain, and you prayed again all of a sudden it rain. That's pretty cool. Well, what's interesting here is God's letting us to, to connect with Elijah. Like, we're just one of him. He's just like us, we're just like him. And it's like Elijah. I mean, the prayer of Elijah first comes from us. It's like Elijah prayed in the rain, and then it rained. According, if the Lord wills it, right? He got mind, that's what the Lord will for Elijah. So for us, we can have the same confidence. I mean, we can pray things. And, and say, God, would you work this way? If you will it, and, and I gotta I'll trust you with what it looks like in the time and everything else, but if you, if you will it, then, then, then maybe so. And so we, we give it to the Lord, but we can believe and have faith that it can happen and there's power in that because God wants us to. Now, so I think we're all to pray the same confidence like life. If we were living in his day and time, um, we would put our robe on the same way you put his robe on, right? He's just, he just, a, just a man. So, pray with confidence. But you could ask the question, well, that text says, uh, let me back up one verse here, uh, Caden. It says the, uh, the righteous person has great power uh, in the prayer as, work, as it's working. And you might say, well, I guess it counts me out. Because I'm not righteous. Yes, I guess I, okay. Well, that's like that's like uh, professional clergy or pastors or or, uh, or or deacons or spiritual leaders in a church or no, no, I don't think I don't see any categories up here. I just say hey, the righteous person comes much as a category. If you will, I put that with me. A righteous person, well, I'm not, I'm not one of those really like really. I don't know why. Wait a minute. 
If you are in Christ, guess what you are? You're righteous. If you have put your faith in Jesus, then you are righteous. For God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. That's the Apostle Paul in the church in Corinth. God made Jesus who knew no sin, to become sin for us. That's the whole cross event. Bore our sins upon himself, sacrificed, buried, rose again, conquered sin, conquered Satan, conquered death. We placed our faith in Jesus, then we receive, guess what, church? We receive the righteousness of the Lord. We receive a, a cleansing, a, a promise to get the <coughs> eternal life, a, a new life in Christ. We are, we are a new creation, and as a new creation, the way God looks at us is righteous. We know we still can sin and fall short of that. <coughs> God must didn't believe that. He kind of had this kind of uh, sidebar theology about perfectionism. I'm not going to go there, obviously, but, but I believe with sin and fall short, but the way God looks at us is righteous because of the righteousness of who? Not us, but Jesus. Amen. And so when we have a promise and a command, then to pray, and it says the righteous person prays, it can believe and agree with the Lord that good things happen through our prayers, then that is for us who are in Christ. So let us be encouraged. We have an Ebenezer. We have a rock of hope that we can go to and call upon in prayer, showing our dependence upon Him. And God will answer according to His will. And His will is always holy, righteous, and just. I, I did read this passage uh, yesterday. And I wrote this in my verse, my Bible, looking at previous verses here. Prayer can be an act of humility. Lord, we need you. That brings forth the promise. He will exalt, lift up, carry, sustain, and empower his people. In chapter 4 of Acts, it says, you know, God does not bless the prideful person, the arrogant person, but those who are humble, he lifts them up and carries them. Chapter 4, verse 10. If we as God's people humble ourselves and we pray, and we keep on praying, and we keep on our dependence upon the Lord, there's a humility in that. And, and what comes with that humility is a great assurance that then God is lifting his people up and carrying us, carrying us forward to be the church that he's called us to be. I take, I take, I take great hope in that. Do you? Maybe so in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace this day to gather in the heat. Uh, Lord, you're good, whether it's uh, cool inside or hot inside, you're a good God. And uh, we acknowledge you as such. Lord, I, I pray this heat somehow. Maybe, maybe it would give us this reminder of like a, a flame. A flame that puts out heat. Would you, would you enable your church here at Water's Edge to be a flame that, that, that is burning, which means to put off a heat, a burning, a burning desire to see your glory. Reach everyone in Lake Country and beyond that you sent us out to be a part of. Lord, oh, may it be so. May, may the flame always burn. The flame's gone out, Lord. May you revive it. May you restore it. We know that the beginning point is through prayer. Lord, call, call upon your name. Lord, I pray anyone here this morning or listening online that says, you know what? I'm not a righteous person. Lord, may they trust in Jesus then and find the righteousness in the one who is risen, who is the resurrected King who has made the way possible for them to become a son or daughter of Him, to confess their sinfulness, have it cleansed, and become a newborn, new creation, son or daughter of the living God. Holy Spirit, do that work wherever it needs to take place, here, or those watching, or those maybe hearing this message in the future. Do it according to your glory. I ask that in Jesus' name. Lord, we leave this place. May you... May you uh, just give us a great week in, in thee. Help us to call upon your name throughout the week. Help us remember that you are our rock of hope. You are our great Ebenezer. And uh, we'll give you all the praise. And uh, we'll prayerfully do that as we look up our joy as well. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Bless you guys this week. Pray that we will get the air just fixed this week. We're going to replace probably the better thing to do. And then also, one last thought, if you can help us out Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, uh, love to have you. God bless you all.